So we're talking about, you know, that, you know, that we're to uh, be no more children, tossed to and fro, carried about with every wind of doctrine by the slight of men and cunning craftiness, whereby they lie in wait to deceive, speaking the truth in love, and they grow up into him in all things, even the head which is Christ, from whom the whole body fitly joined together and compacted by that which every joint supplieth, according to the effectual working in the measure of every part, but making increase of the body unto the edifying of itself in love. Hallelujah. And so we're, we're talking about uh, growing in the Lord, becoming spiritually mature, becoming separated to the things of God. Talked about this morning, uh, for as much as anything, growing comes from the Word of God, not being children anymore, uh, that there's individual growth and there is, there is corporate growth. Now, I'm going to tell you something. Corporate growth is contingent upon the individual growth within the body. If you don't grow, if, if, the, body, if the local body doesn't grow, the corporate body won't grow. You're just kind of, you know what I'm saying? You just kind of sit there and stay there. So we need to grow uh, individually and corporately. Um, let's go on over to 1 Corinthians chapter thir uh, 3. Hallelujah. Now one of the... Uh, prerequisites to growth is love. You're not going to grow without being a love person. Hallelujah. 1 Corinthians 3. Now it says here in verses 1 through 3, And I, brethren, could not speak unto you as unto spiritual, but as unto carnal, even as babes in Christ. Now, this is not a new problem in the body of Christ. This, is a, this has been a, from the very beginning, problem in the body of Christ. Okay, I fed you with milk, not with meat, for hitherto you were not able to bear it, neither yet are you now able. That, but isn't that a resounding compliment from Paul? You couldn't handle meat, and you still can't. Sometimes, if, if, I don't want to tell you, can I say something here just, just, as, a, just as a statement of opinionated fact? <laughs> Hallelujah. If Paul preached in the church today, they'd run him out of town on a rail. Hello? He's mean. He's harsh. He's not nice. He just flat out came in and said, you guys are a bunch of meatheads. Should have been feeding you the word, good word of God, and you're, you're, you're babies. You can't even handle it. You're, you're, and you're still babies. That's harsh. Isn't that harsh? Yeah. Well, you know, we're, we're trying, we're, you know, Jerry's being mature over there. We're, no, that's not too harsh. That's good. I'm just messing with you. Hallelujah. If, if the things that Paul said to the church and the way he said stuff to the church, people would be, they'd be writing books about him. The mean apostle Paul. The, he doesn't walk in love. No. See, love will tell you the truth. He said, speaking the truth in love, may grow up in him in all things. We're, you know, but love tells the truth for your benefit. Not so you can be right, but so for your benefit. So, and he says, for you are yet carnal, for whereas there is among you envy and strife, divisions, are you not carnal and walk as men? Now the Amplified Bible says walk as mere men. Okay? So look at Ephesians 5, 4, 18. So he's talking, he's talking, Paul writes to the church. Understand his letters are written to a church that in, in, in much of the cases are very carnal. The, the church at Corinth was extremely carnal. Even when they got, think, got filled with the Holy Ghost and got the gifts, they were carnal with them. Hello? Ephesians 4, 18, or verse 17 says, This I say, therefore, and testify unto the Lord that you walk henceforth, not as other Gentiles walk in the vanity of their mind, having the understanding dark and being alienated from the life of God because of the ignorance that's in them and because of the blindness of their heart. You see, the power to grow must flow through each part of the body. Without love, there's a dead spot. Remember back here in Ephesians chapter 4, it says, Done to the, edifying, the Bible is to edify itself in love. Without that love walk, we're going to continue to walk in darkness. Look at 1 John chapter 2. That's in the Bible. Last time I checked anyway. 1 John 2. Verse 6. He that saith he abideth in him ought himself also so to walk, even as he walked. Brethren, I write no new commandment to you, but an old commandment which you've heard from the beginning. The old commandment is the word which you've heard from the beginning. Again, a new commandment I write unto you, which thing is true in him. Now, he's, not, he's not being... Um, 
not lying to you. He's saying, you know, basically what he's saying here is this, that the, the, the commandment you have now is, it, 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 it's, it's the old commandment. Now, it may be new but to you, but it's still, the, it's the same commandment we've always had. So, is the, we're not, it's not a new commandment. It's, it's the same old one, but, you know, it is the one we're supposed to walk by now. It's kind of just using a little, you know, way, way Paul did things. Again, I write a new commandment unto you, which is true to him and in you, because the darkness is past and the true light now shineth. He that saith, he is in the light and hateth his brother, is in darkness even until now. He that loveth his brother abideth in the light, and there is none occasion of stumbling in him, uh, or scandal. Uh, he that hateth his brother is in darkness, and he that walk and walketh in darkness, and knoweth not whither he goeth, because that darkness has blinded his eyes. I write unto you, little children, because your sins are forgiven for your, his name's sake. Now, He's saying here, and look over in John, uh, the next chapter, 14th verse, we know we have passed from death unto life because we love the brethren. He that loveth not his brother abideth in death. Now, so here we have, <coughs> you're in darkness. Well, what does the Bible say about God's word? The interest of his word giveth light. It giveth understanding to the simple. Isn't that right? So if you're walking, in if you're walking out of love, you're walking in darkness, guess what's not entering in? The light. If the light's not entering in, you know, we receive with, we, with meekness the, uh, the grafted word of God, which is able to save your souls. Then Peter says, you know, that we should receive the milk of the word, that we can grow thereby. The word makes you grow. But if you hate your brother, you're not walking in love, you're not growing because you're in darkness. Can't get around it. Spiritual growth is contingent upon walking in love. Hello. There's, a, there's not enough love walking in the body of Christ. I mean, in charismatic, word of faith, Holy Ghost circles. There's not enough love walk. That went over big. Amen. You know, right here in our own church, there's not enough love walk. There needs to be more love walk. Walking in love. There's, there's stuff that goes on, stuff that's going on. People act a certain ways. You know, just flat out. Like, just like, you know, Denzel Washington said in The Preacher's Wife. He said, God don't like ugly. Well, we got, we've had folk act ugly. God don't like ugly. I mean, we ain't talking about looks. We're talking about attitude. Hello? Are you here? You're going home. Now, the, the love walk. If you're going to hate your brother. Well, I don't hate my brother. I just won't talk to him. Right. Hello? Yeah, thank you, Janice. That was a good mm -hmm. Sound like the mother-in-law and the preacher's wife. I will conveniently have a hip injury and be here until the year 2000. <laughs> mm -hmm. How many, how many ever saw that? It's, it was the remake of The Bishop's Wife with Cary Grant. I, I, I like the Denzel Washington version better myself. You know, and I'm a Cary Grant fan. But anyway, you know, walking in love, <clears throat> let's, let's kind of go to the, the antithesis of this. Getting out of love is detrimental to all areas of your life. It hurts your faith. For in Christ Jesus, first uh, Galatians, I believe, 5, 6, for in Christ Jesus neither circumcision avails anything nor uncircumcision, but faith which worketh by love. So you get out of love, you get out of faith. Yep. Amen. Paul said in 1 Corinthians, he said, though I have faith to move mountains and da-da-da-da-da and have not love, you know, I'm nothing. Right. If I have not love, I'm a clanging, tinkling symbol. Amen? You know, people run around talking about how much power they got and how much faith they got. But if you don't have love, Paul said, you're nothing. You have nothing. Actually, it, it, it will be detrimental to your faith, getting out of love. Getting out of love will bring you into darkness. Therefore, no revelation can flow, which means you can't grow. He said, he that, that hated his brother is in darkness. Didn't he? Yeah. Now, if the interest of his word gives light, and walking out of walking in, in unforgiveness and walking out of love brings darkness, and you have to and you grow by the word, and you're walking in abide or abiding. Let me see what he says here. Let me, I, I don't know if he said walking or abideth.
Well, he says, he that, is, he that hateth his brother is in darkness, even until now. Verse 11, he that hateth his brother is in darkness and walketh in darkness, <coughs> and whither not, <coughs> and knoweth not whither he goeth, because the darkness has blinded his eyes. What does that tell me? That tells me you've shut the door to spiritual growth by walking out of love. Now, you can get all the revelations your head can dream up, but you're not really getting Bible revelation because you're walking in darkness. And so the Word of God, te- now, see, this is part of growing up. We have to grow. You can get all kinds of revelation that's not Bible. It didn't come from the Word of God. Like I said, you know, got preachers on there get on television and say, God told me, and I asked the Lord why, and he told me this, and he told me that, and, he, and you go, and, and, and there's no Bible with what any, anything God told them. Well, guess what? If there's no Bible with it, I don't want to, I'm not going to follow what God told you. Because I got news for you. If God's talking to you, he's going to bear witness to the word. Amen. The Bible even teaches us that the Holy Spirit, who is the teacher of the church. See, if God's talking to you today, the Spirit of God's talking to you. The Holy Ghost. And he and the the written word, it says that that, that, that they agree. They're in harmony one with another. He will tell you what the word says, and anything he speaks to you will be in line and in harmony with the word. And there'll be scripture that will substantiate that position. Not some off, off the wall thing, something you can't figure out, something you got to have, you know, uh, 45 people to tell you that this is what it means, and, and you're looking at it going, it don't mean that. Hello? I can't, I can't get that out of that no matter what you do. Hallelujah. Y'all here, you're going home. So, so the Word of God, the Spirit of God talking to us, the Spirit of God ministering to us, the Spirit of God speaking to our human, re, uh, re, recreated human spirits that are alive unto God, the Spirit of God is going to speak to you in harmony with the Word of God. Now, I've had people say things like this. Well, the Lord told me, you know, that I, I didn't have to be the devil's doormat. He did tell you to walk in love. I've seen people get so mad at just the mention of another Christian's name, they never about blow a gasket. I mean, steam coming out the ear. Their toupee lifted off the top of their head. I, I, if you get that mad over the, just the mention of another Christian's name, you're not walking in love. Hello? Listen, God tore our church up, messed our church up years ago. You could come, you could tell me. I, I could say his name right now, and I wouldn't blow a gasket. Amen. You know, I've forgiven him. He's, you know, what he's, what he, his, his sin and the things he's done is between him and the Lord, and, it's, and I'm not holding him accountable to it because, you know, God will deal with him about that. But walking in love. See, we have to, if we're going to walk in love, if we're going to win, if we're going to have a victorious life, we, and if we're going to grow, we've got to walk in love. And so uh, in the individual life, we have to walk in love. And if you're not walking in love, let me tell you something, it will hurt churches. People getting out of love in the church. I, how, many, how many have ever been in part, of a, part of or know of a church split in your life? All right. You know what a church split is? Some people, some people get together. They don't like what their pastor's preaching. They get mad. They can't vote them out because they don't have enough votes. So they leave and take as many people with them as they can. They go somewhere else and they start another church. And usually they'll name it some syrupy, sloppy, agape name. The true, true godly love church. And they're full of the, so full of the devil. Hello? Now, see, now I, I, growing up, I was in a denomination, and, and we had a church split. And the church split went across town. And I'm telling you, they were a sight. Them folks would gossip. Them folks would talk about folks. They talked about each other's tithing records. So and so tithed us so much. Pass around the church. How much somebody's tithing? I mean, they'd walk in with a hat on and had the same dress or the same hat as somebody else, and they'd sit there and get mad. They bore that hat and they knew I was wearing mine. How did they know you're going to wear that hat today? 
Did you have a FaceTime in your house? They were watching it? Did they hack your FaceTime? Dear Lord, I'm telling you right now, I mean gossip and talk. And I mean, uh, they, they could sit in the living room and lick a spoon in the kitchen. <laughs> Hallelujah. Long of tongue, all right? I mean, the church, I, the one I was a part of, you know, the final denomination said, we ain't, we ain't giving you another pastor. They, they run every pastor off. Every one they got, they ran him off. And finally, they wouldn't let him run this one off until he was running around with the women in the church. Hello. And so he was running around women, and one of the deacons was running around women. Yeah. See? And they were the meanest, some of the meanest people you'll ever meet. Mean folk. And there were some good people there, but I'm going to tell you, as a general rule, the, the, the lot and bunch were some nasty, mean folk. Hello? They'd have a revival. And I'll shout at the altar. And be talking about them next week. About so and so, how much they gave in the offering. Yep. It took that church years to get that out of there. What happened? What happened? Most of them died off is what happened. To get all that spirit out of there, there was a nasty spirit in that church. Y'all hear you going home. See, we've got to walk in love. We have to have love. I mean, if we lose our love walk, we lose everything. If we, walk, if we lose the love walk of, of being compassionate and kind one to another and caring one for another, yeah, people are going to offend you. I'm probably offended. I probably, I, people are probably mad with me right now about my series I'm preaching. Some of them, some of them didn't even come back tonight because they were mad about it probably. I don't know. Get mad. I've had them sit right out here and get furious with me in church before while I'm preaching. I've seen, and, and I've seen them. I've seen them cross the arms. I've seen them set their jaw. I've seen them get mad. And then look over two seats over and they Karen's over there. She had a pom-poms, you know. <laughs> Go, Pastor! <laughs> That's right! All right, anyway. Just... <laughs> <clears throat> and two seats over there, I mean, they're, they're ready to crucify him. Crucify him! Crucify him! Give us Barabbas! <laughs> See, when churches lose, lose their love walk, so you, and if that get, thing gets in the church and, and, and didn't get corrected by the Spirit, it'll take over the whole church. And darkness will come on it. And revelation won't flow. People can't get helped. There's no anointing. Because of the darkness that's entered in. Not just false doctrine. Just get out of love. Forget the false doctrine. Just get out of love. And you'll stop the flow. Because you're walking in darkness. And the Holy Spirit can't minister and work through that. He can do anything he wants to. <laughs> Give me a break. Unbelief kept Jesus from working mighty works. You don't think sin will stop the move of the Spirit? So we as individuals in the body have to make a decision to individually walk in love and corporately walk in love. Be love beings. Carry forth the light. Be bearers of the truth in love. Glory to God. Can you say glory to God? Hallelujah. And, and get, what, um, I remember when I came to the Lord. And um, I mean, although I grew up in a Pentecostal church, I never walked with the Lord. And I remember we, we had been, we, we, all three churches in town we ended up in. We, ended, we went in one and then went with the split and then we got tired of that and left that and went back over to the other one, to the first such and such church of that city. Uh, it was called First because they were first. <laughs> you ever been in a city, little, little small podunk towns like my hometown? And you know, you got on one corner the first such and such church and right across the street you got the second. Yeah. Well, down in Greenville, we had, we had a, uh, we, there, was, there was a Baptist church down there. And um, 
it was called Trinity, Trinity such and such Baptist. It was one of the Baptist denominations. I won't tell you which one. And uh, there's, there's several, in case you don't know. There's Free Will Baptist, there's Southern Baptist, there's, um, and, and you know if it's Southern Baptist, they pronounce it Baptist. Yeah. <laughs> okay? <laughs> it's pronounced with a D if you're, if you're Southern. All right? I, I'm just teasing now. And, um, you know, and you've got Pentecostal Free Will Baptist. You got, so you've got all kinds of different things. Missionary Baptist, Primitive Baptist. That's the, that's the tobacco dipping uh, sni- uh, 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 spit tune churches. Isn't that right, Belinda? <laughs> Belinda was a Primitive Baptist. And she got born again filled with the Holy Ghost. <laughs> That'll set you free, won't it? <laughs> Glory to God. But they had a big church split. I mean, they had a big, it was a big church. You know, we, you know, we've been in churches in the south, the Baptist churches that weren't big. Yeah. You know, and well, it was a big one. And they split. And the split went over there and started church, and they named it Unity. Now, they're the ones that split. And took, they, were, yeah, they were in unity in sin. Yeah, unity. We're in unity. That's the kind of stuff that goes on all the time. Hallelujah. You know, the, the godly love church. You know, the split of the, you know, such and such church. We're the godly love church. You know, we're the love fellowship. Godly love fellowship. We got, you know, that, see, that kind of stuff hurts. But I remember when we went, when our family ended up at the first, and I'd been working for several years. I wasn't in church. I was working on weekends. I was in college, and I was working in, in the... I know that you don't want to rejoice too much of this, but I was working in the barbecue restaurant learning how to make barbecue and fried chicken. <laughs> yeah, glory to God. Hallelujah. But I'd work week, I had to work weekends because I was in school during the week. And so I, I worked Sundays 9 to 3 every, every week. And, uh, but then I got, you know, got out of school and just got full-time, and I wasn't working weekends. And so um, uh, I started going to church, got saved. But I'll never forget Brother Moore, J. Melvin Moore. You'll never meet another man. I, I've never met. I have still never met in, in a personal relationship way. way. You know, I, I know Dad Hagen was a man of love. But, you know, to, I didn't get to spend time with Dad Hagen like that. You understand what I'm saying? I knew him, I knew him by the Spirit. I knew, I knew him. I was in his meetings, but I didn't know him on a personal, intimate level like Brother Moore. Brother Moore, I've never seen anybody embody and, and, and known in that way, somebody who embodied the love of God so much as him. Now, he was a plant manager for Phil Crest Mills down in Greenville. And my, my mother-in-law worked for him at one time. And, and, and they all, every, everybody had good things to say about him. Just Because he, he loved you whether you were born again or not. I mean, he would share Jesus with you. He would love on you. He treated every, he, he treat every sinner just like they were, they were the first kin in the house of God. I've never seen any, anybody walk in that kind of love. And people, people come to that church just because of him. Because when he walked in the door, they got met with his love. Amen? Yeah. Amen. See, they'll know that we've passed from death unto life because we love the brethren. There's a love. I'm going to tell you, love will draw people. I said, love will draw people. And we have to be, you know, we have to be love beings. I mean, I'm quite honest, we've had some stuff that's gotten cleaned out of our church in the past couple of years because there was some stuff that went, well, there was, there, was a, there was an agitation of not walking in love. I mean, God didn't want to fix them. Yeah, he wanted to fix them, but they wouldn't walk in love. See, sometimes that just has to go so that, so that you know, that, that wholeness can come to a body. I believe we, we have to be um, not affected by the actions and attitudes of others. Let them set our course by things that they say about what well, God showed them and God showed them and God showed them. Now, the Bible says they'll know that we're Christians. They know we're not other Christians. They'll know he that, he, he that um, we know we've passed from death into life because we love the brethren. He that loveth not his brother abideth in death. Or you're abiding in the darkness. You're abiding in the things of death. Oh, how God wants, you know, we sing, oh, how he loves you and me. Oh, how he loves you and me. He gave his life. What more could he give? 
Oh, how he loves you. Oh, how he loves me. Oh, how he loves you and me. And get up and get mad. So I might ride out to church. Come on now. And wonder why our blood pressure is about to, you know, you know, go off the needles on, or go off the, the charts on your little machine you got. Hello. He does love you and me. But he says he loves you and me. And then he tells you, if you don't love each other, you're walking in darkness. You're walking in death. Amen? See, we're really imitators of God as dear children. God's a being of love. I, I always get, it's not amazed, and it's not tickled, and it's not funny. But it, see, I guess it ceases to amaze me that people can come up and have this revelation from God about not doing the word, that they got this little special thing with God, they don't have to do the word. Well, me and the Lord, talk, I talked to the Lord about this, and he showed me that, that, that. Yeah, but the Bible says this. Now, where'd you get your cute little revelation from? Your flesh? You got an out for your flesh to, be in, to walk in the flesh and not walk in love? Hello? Y'all hear you gone home. See, we're to grow up. And when the, 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 if we don't walk in love, we're not going to be able to grow. So we're going to have to love one another. Remember that song? We are one in the family. We are one in the Lord. We are one in the Spirit. We are one. We are one. And they'll know we are Christians by our love. By our love. Yes, they'll know we are Christians by our love. By our love. I'd like to see the world actually see the church walk in love. I'd like to be able to go, you're a Christian. How do you know? I see how you walk in love toward people. I see your compassion. Hello? You walk in love. I mean, I like you. I don't like, I don't like what you stand for. I'm an atheist. But I got to give it to you. You walk in love. Hello? Nikki Cruz told... Wilkerson, he said, I'm going to take this knife and cut your body into a thousand pieces. And then what are you going to say? He said, every piece be crying, I love you, Nikki. I love you, Nikki. And that's what broke him. I said, that's what broke him. <laughs> the love of God. And see, we'll talk about we, we, we love the sinner. But what about loving the saint? Well, they did such and such to me. Wow. So that's liberty not to walk in love. No, that's not liberty to not walk in love. You've got to walk in love. Amen? Amen. Hallelujah. Praise God. Well, let's go over here to, um, let's run 1 Corinthians chapter 12. I'm going to have to tape these pages back in. They're trying to, or I'm going to lose them. Starting in verse 12. For as the body is one and hath many members, and all members of that one body being many are one body, so also is Christ. Now stop right there. We're members of the same body. Now bozo, if you're hurting another part of the body, you're hurting yourself. Hello. I can look down at my toe and go, I'm mad at the toe and take a hammer and slam it. Guess what? The rest of my body is going to suffer. Because it's still part of my body. I might not like, I mean, how many of you have got toes you don't like the way they look? And pe people are funny. You know, they look at their body. They'll look at, I don't like the way my ears are shaped. I don't like my toes, the way my toes are shaped. You know, um, you know I don't know about you, you, but some people, their second toe is longer than their big toe. Mine's like that. Gives you great picking up abilities. You can reach over there and pick up a piece of paper and pick it up without having to bend over. Hallelujah. I mean, I, I think it's very useful. Hello, my, my, my pointer finger is crooked. See that? Get Nathan to hold his up. There's no doubt that's my son. I say, how do you know? Hold her fingers up. They're shaped just alike. Go, I 
I mean, you, our fingers look just alike. I mean, I, if, if his got amputated, you could cut mine off and stick it on him. Never know the difference. Now, him and his mama got the same side profile nose. I was watching, they walked in front of the car the other day, and I went, well, me and him got the finger, her and him got the nose. You know, and I'm, I'm sure we could go find things on the girls. Hallelujah. Uh, my eyes and stuff like that. Hello. Amen. Oh, Jesse does this. Like her daddy. Get excited. <laughs> get, get all excited about something, start talking, and my eyebrows go up, my eyes open up. Jesse does the exact same thing. For by one spirit are we all baptized into one body, whether we're Jews or Gentiles, whether we're bond or free. We've all been made to drink of one spirit. The body's not many, is, um, but the body is not one member, but many. If the foot shall say, because I'm not the hand, I'm not of the body, is it therefore not of the body? If the ear shall say, I'm not the eye, I'm not of the body, is it therefore not of the body? If the whole body were an eye, where is the hearing? If the whole were hearing, where is the smelling? But now hath God set the members, every one of them, in the body as it has pleased him. And if they were all one member, where were the body? And now are they many members, but yet one body. I cannot say unto the hand, I have no need of thee. Now Paul is using the physical body as an allegory of the spiritual body. Nor again the head to the feet, I have no need of you. I tell you what, without the, without the feet, the head ain't going nowhere. All right? Nay, much more these members of the body, which seem to be more feeble, are necessary. Now let's face it, folks. Who, wants to, who, who sends people pictures of their kidney to pick up a date? You better have your kidneys working. Y'all yeah. hear you're going home. Right. And those members of the body which we think to be less honorable, upon these we bestow much more honor, and our uncomely parts have more abundant comeliness. For our comely parts have no need, but God hath tempered the body together, having given more abundant honor to that which lacked, that there should be no schism or division in the body, but the members should have the same care one for another. Now you get somebody comes into the church. Now I want to tell you something. I know people. I know people that do this kind of thing. If they're a if they're a bright and shining light, I mean they're going to give them money. They're going to talk about how wonderful they are. They're going to just pump them up. I mean da 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 da. -da. And you get some bozo coming in the church. And I'm, I'm just using this in, to describe what we're talking about here. That's kind of you know not with it or you know. Uh, don't have anything going for them, and they're kind of, you know, just, they're a rough-edged person in the church, and they just don't, you know, I don't consider them, but I'm just talking about people's thinking now, okay? Nothing happens for them. Now, this is where I got in, in, um, in um, a little crossways with some of the people teaching prosperity. Because they're coming in and saying, I sat down at the end of the row at such and such prosperity conference, and people walked by, I didn't even preach. And God, they gave me $25,000. But I want to know about the guy who mops floors at Walmart at 2 o'clock in the morning, sitting on the back row. How many thousands of dollars did he get? See? Everybody's going, and then we started, they started, people started teaching, you got to give up. Really? I said, really? Is that what the Bible says? Give up? Give to a higher anointing? Nah, it says not to muzzle out the, the, the muzzle the oxen that trade out the corn, to give honor to those people. That, that's 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 an imbalance. You gotta keep things in balance with the word of God. It didn't say you forget the poor folk and give up if you want to return. But actually the Bible says he that gives to the poor lends to the Lord and he will repay. The Lord said he'll repay. That's what, you know, when, when it started becoming about making all the preachers rich and, 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 uh, and not using the blessing of the Lord to minister life to people, something just got kind of cross-grained with me. I'm not against prosperity. I believe in biblical prosperity. I'm against charlatan preaching, where it's all about getting the preacher rich. 
And he's bragging about how, how expensive his garden dog is or how many airplanes they got and this kind of stuff. Somewhere in here, it's got to be about building the kingdom and taking care of the parts that aren't comely. Rich people, you know, listen, if you get rich and have a lot of money, don't ever turn into this. Don't use your money to buy influence with, with people. To buy your way to the top. You're too good to hang out with the, with the uh, peons of the church. Got to be buddies with the big dogs. I'm not a big dog. Jesus said the Son of Man came to be a servant and a minister. Not to, be, not to be ministered to. I see, we, we, brought, we brought this on ourselves by some of our teaching. It needs to be corrected. Say amen, oh me, or grunt. And, and whether one member suffer, or, I'm sorry, verse 25, there should be no schism in the body, but that all members should have the same care one for another. Now, when we took, when, when Rhema uh, Ministerial Association, I shouldn't have said that probably, when our ministerial association uh, was regrouping, we, we, we had really, we had, lost, we had lost a lot of momentum. Um, one of the things our director said, he said, we want to have the same care one for another. Whether the guy's got a church of 10,000 or the guy's got a church of, of 25, they get the same care from our directors. They don't get less care because they're a small church as the guy's got a big church. They get the same care. Amen. And I'll tell you, and, and it should be. The guy's got a small church get the same care, you know, Oh, I'm rubbing elbows with a guy with a church of 10,000. What are you looking for? What kind of payback are you looking for? Are you just looking for the, be able to say, have the recognition that you're with your rubbing elbows with the, with the guy? He's got 10,000 member church. Everybody knows their name. Now, now, you, got, now you can go name, drop names now. See, if you drop church of 25 member pastor, who's that? Wait, they're down at such and such. Don't you know them? I've never heard of them. Yeah, how big is this church? That question comes up all the time. How big is the church? Now, you know one thing I've never asked the people in, my, in, in seven years of being a district director, you know what I've never asked the people in my thing? How big is your church? Because it doesn't matter. It shouldn't matter how much money somebody makes in our church. You shouldn't just fellowship with the rich folks. Hello. And quite frankly, your goal should not be to hang out with the pastor all the time, every chance you get. Now, we love you. We want to spend time with the members of the church. But there's people who won't hang out with anybody but, but won't, don't want to hang out with anybody but me. You understand what I'm saying? They're trying, to work, they're trying to weasel their way in somewhere. Nobody's doing that now, but it's been in the past. Just, just say, calm down. Okay. Hey, talk about me, talk about me. No, 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 no. This happened in the past. And if that access wasn't granted, they got mad. Well, it's not there. It's not, it's not there for that. And we should have the same care one for another. Amen. I heard something uh, just yesterday. I was watching one of the football games yesterday. And uh, watched a horrible football game today. Anyway, uh, I, got my, I got my belief system about the officiating, how they changed the course of a game by how they called and didn't call. But that, that's neither here nor there. Game's over. Can't anything be done about it next year. Anyway. But, I, you know, uh, Drew Brees was, was um, somewhere with one of the new young quarterbacks in the league, uh, the Brian Wilson guy in <laughs> Seattle. And, in that, and, and they were having some, you know, some, something was going on. He was there. They were there together. And the older quarterback, Breeze, shared pointers and tips with the younger guy, Wilson. Now, you think that's one of your opponents. It is one of their opponents, but they're, they're, they're in that same, you know, they're, they're in a family. They're in, the, they're in the football family, and the quarterbacks are kind of on their, 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 own, their own family of quarterbacks, you know. And here he is, instead, he, he's helping them to get better, sharing the insight. Now, now, listen, when you're in this kind of situation, don't do this, do this. Just giving wisdom. And see, he's the big dog. He's, you know, gone to the Super Bowl. Did they win it a couple years ago? I don't remember. Yeah. The Saints won the Super Bowl, you know. 
I mean, you know, Bruce, Breeze has got that thing going on down there. They got their, 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 their mojo going on down there in Louisiana. They got some voodoo going on too. Anyway, because they can win down there. They can't win anywhere else. Hallelujah. <laughs> just, that, was just, that was just me. That wasn't God. Hallelujah. Amen. But help, helping out. He, he's the big guy. I mean, he's got the Super Bowl ring. Amen. See, that's a whole other class. But he's helping out the younger kid. And see, we've got to look at the body of Christ. We've got to look at our family. And we've got to give the same care one to another. If so-and-so ha didn't have anything, didn't have a, a, a nice whatever, a nice this, didn't have, you know, would you go eat with them? We want to take the pastor out to eat. That's great. How about Sister So and So? Nobody's ever taken out to eat because she don't have, any, you know, you ain't, ain't gonna like being with them. They don't have the same education you got. They don't wear clothes the same class you have. You might even be embarrassed to be seen with them in public because they don't have good English. Now I've done gone to Medlin, hadn't I? Good meddling. Do you know you might change their life by taking them to eat? You're not going to change my life taking me to eat. Do you understand what I'm saying? I'm, not, I'm saying, look, I enjoy being taken to eat. It's nice. But you're not going to change my life, you know, because you paid for a meal at, you know, wherever. Somebody like that in the church has never, got, never, has never gotten to do anything because they don't have the money. They're living in poverty and they're living, de you know, sometimes in desperation. And they're, they're not the, they don't have all the, the, they're not polished and all this. And you take them to eat somewhere. And I ain't talking about Mickey D's. They've eaten there before. Hello. Take them to Roos Chris. Pastor, we want to take you to Roos Chris. Take them. We'll take you to Chop House. Take them. Oh, but Pastor, they don't even know how to dress. So stinking what? They may gain a vision of life that they never even thought they could have. Amen. I like Ruth's Chris. I don't know. Listen, quite frankly, we, we've. We've only eaten there a few times, and most of the time it's been because, you know, somebody gave us a gift certificate to go there, and, and it's, it's nice. I personally have a hard time just shelling out $38 for the steak without the potatoes or the, any of the other sides, just quite frankly. You know, if I have a gift certificate, okay. You know, something that one of our family members gave us, Ruby Tuesday, gift certificate, $50 gift card. So we went during Christmas. I still had to add another $30. At lunch. L-U-N-C-H. Lunch menu. Cost me and my, my family of five $80 to eat, eat Ruby Tuesdays. And we just ordered like a meal with the salad. I think most of us got, a couple of them got something to drink. The rest of the other three of us got water. Because it's $2.89 for a glass of tea. Anyway, 80 bucks for Ruby Tuesdays. If I hadn't had the gift certificate, I would have, I would have called the police <laughs> for armed robbery. <laughs> no, I probably called the FBI. I still should have called the police for the $30 over the 50 But, you know, having the same care one for another, verse 26, and whether one member suffers, all members suffer with it, or one member be honored, all the members rejoice. Now ye are the body of Christ and members in particular. We're all part of the same body. So if sister so-and-so suffers and we don't minister to them, we're allowing ourselves to suffer. Because we didn't walk in love with them. Grunt. Say, mm, God. Mm, dun, dun, ooh, ah, just do that... Uh, Remember the Titans thing. 
Got to do something. Got to make some kind of noise so I know you're still breathing. See, the love walk is more than being able to walk into the same room together and not shoot each other. Amen. Or agreeing to avoid each other. It's not walking in love. My God. And how are you going to minister to the sinner who needs a miracle from God and you can't even get along with somebody sitting on the other side of the church? Say amen, oh me, grunt, or do all three. All right. So if we're going to grow, we're going to have to make decisions. We're going to be love beings. And we're going to walk in love. Dad Hagen used to say this. He said, if I ever prayed and didn't get an answer, first place I checked was my love walk. You know, so he prayed about something and there didn't an answer come. He got to his love walk first. He started checking himself up, making sure he was, that he was walking. You know, you got people that teach you now, oh, you're under grace. It doesn't matter. You're going to get it anyhow. No, you're not. I just don't know why people teach stupid stuff. Well, because it makes some money. i just be honest with you, it makes money. There's a lot of stuff people teach because it purely just makes money for them. They get big. They get on television. They write books. Everybody buys their books. They get royalties. They go to the meetings and just throw money at it. Pay to go to the meetings and then give offerings. Because everybody just feels good about themselves. Be careful. A number of years ago, we had one of these guys come in town, and, and for six weeks they had, um, and listen, I believe the Spirit of God can move on us and we can have holy laughter. I believe you can have a time in the Lord where, the, where, where God uh, liberates us from things. When the Lord turned again the captivity of Zion, then was our mouth filled with laughter and our tongue would sing. I believe that all, oh, yes. Six weeks, morning and night, Laughing. Had somebody used to be in our church. They call me up. Oh, and they, they're laughing. They're laughing. Oh, Pastor is. <laughs> you got to come over these. <laughs> me, me, I can't even talk. <laughs> yeah, okay, wonderful, brother. Oh, well, Miss Change in my life. <laughs> oh, I'm so changed. Guy was here for six weeks. They went and laughed every day. Saw him about a month after the guy left town. Look like Eeyore. Whatever. It's a day. Sun came up and the sun will go down. Oh well. Now just a month ago you were laughing your head off and it see, <clears throat> we have to be careful about that kind of stuff. Amen. We have to be careful. Of course, then, you know, preachers got to be careful because you don't want to get out of love, but at the same time, you want to protect your flock. Amen. And when people come along and start teaching you, you know, you know, you can walk out of love and God's still going to bless you. No, he's not. God's not going to bless you in rebellion. So we're going to walk in love. And if people offend us, we're going to walk in love. If they do us wrong, we're going to walk in love. And we're going to forgive them. Forgive them quickly. How quick? Don't let the sun go down on your wrath. Pretty much that means at most in the middle of the summer. You, if it happens to, when the sun came up, the most you got is 13 hours. Unless you live in one of the poles. Okay? Okay? And then at the most you got 23 because the sun will dip below the horizon about, for about one hour. We come back up. You're just going to have to walk in love. And if you live at one of the poles, it's probably going to be hard for you to get out of love with somebody anyway. But you can. This concludes our teaching on Egypt just saying all that and growing up. How many are blessed?